The World Bank has predicted a 7.5% economic growth rate for India for the year 2024, which is the financial year 2023-2024. Not only that, but it has also said that India is going to be the driver of economic growth in South Asia. So before we dive deep into this topic, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you do not miss our new videos. And in this video, we are not only going to talk about the estimates of the World Bank regarding the economic growth in the South Asian region, but also the challenges that are currently being faced by the South Asian countries. So with India growing at a 7.5% growth rate in 2024, this rate is expected to be 6% in 2024 for the entire South Asian region. And the South Asian region is expected to be the fastest growing region in the world by this World Bank report. And the World Bank has also released its predictions for other South Asian countries. So for Bangladesh, it has estimated that Bangladesh would grow at a 5.6% growth rate. This number is 4.9% for Bhutan, 3.3% for Nepal and 1.8% for Pakistan. As for Pakistan, Pakistan is currently facing an economic crisis and the inflation rate in Pakistan is through the roof. This has led for Pakistan to borrow a sum of $3 billion from the IMF. However, the IMF has said that Pakistan is on its road to recovery based on the IMF's second review of Pakistan's stabilization program. But this road to recovery comes with its own challenges. The World Bank has reported that 10 million people that are just above poverty line in Pakistan, they are at risk of falling into poverty. And this risk will remain high if there are no reforms that are put in place in Pakistan. On the other hand, when we talk about India, India is expected to grow at 7.5% as I've mentioned earlier, but India also has its own set of problems. And one of the major problems that it currently is facing is the unemployment problem. Let's take a look at this report. It says that 36% of the IIT Bombay graduates, they are unable to find a job. They have not found a job yet. 36% is a huge number. Out of the 2000 graduates that appeared for interviews, about 700 of them, they were unable to secure a job. And this is not happening for the first time. This number was similar last year as well. In 2023, this number was 32.8% of the IIT Bombay graduates. They were unable to find a job last year as well. And this situation is not limited to just IIT Bombay, but it is similar across other IITs as well. IIT Bombay is one of the topmost institutions, not just in India, but around the world. And if this is the situation at IIT Bombay, then we can only imagine what the situation would be at private colleges and other government institutions in India. So while the World Bank has taken into account India's exceptional growth rate in the third quarter of 2023-2024 financial year, which was 8.4%, it also highlighted the unemployment issues, not just in India, but across South Asia. India is currently in a phase of jobless growth. What do I mean by jobless growth? It means that while the economy is growing, there is a stagnation at the job level. There is no net increase in the job creation. And as per this study that was conducted by Indian Institute of Management Lucknow, it was found that despite India's economic growth, there was a net labor displacement instead of job creation. So while the economy is growing, there are less number of people that are actually involved in the job market. And this gets worse for people with educational qualifications. Now, the unemployment rate for the illiterate and the less educated class was about 0.57% and 1.13% respectively, whereas the unemployment rate for the highly educated class was about 14%. And this is 2020-21's data. As of now, graduate unemployment is about 29% in this country. And the same unemployment rate for people with secondary or higher degree is about 18%. And for the illiterate, it is about 3.4%. And it is not that people with higher educational qualification, they are unable to find a job. It is that they are not able to find a job that suits their caliber and the skills that they've learned. They've spent lakhs and lakhs of rupees tens of thousands of dollars on their education and skills and yet they are unable to find the job that suits their skills. And as I mentioned earlier, the World Bank has stated in its report that this unemployment issue is not just pertaining to India but the South Asian region as a whole. Now, the working population in the South Asian region is increasing. The employment ratio was 59% in 2023 for South Asia as compared to 70% in other developing regions around the world. So you can see that while South Asia is expected to be the region with the highest growth rate in the world, 
it is still lacking to create more jobs. Francis Kaunsorge, who is the chief economist of the World Bank for the South Asian region, said that South Asia is failing to capitalize on its demographic dividend, resulting in missed opportunity. This means that South Asia's working population, which should contribute and increase its productivity and effectiveness, is not able to find opportunities in the job market. South Asian countries as a whole, they are not doing a good job in placing their working population to work so that not only could they get more employment, but they could also add to the productivity and output for the region as a whole. And this is leading to missing out on many opportunities and increasing the output for this region. But how do we solve this unemployment issue? There could be a number of ways or reforms that these countries in the South Asian region, they could apply. They could increase an openness in trade. Now the private investment in the South Asian region as a whole, it has decreased. They could also work on relaxing certain laws that could allow for private investors and private companies to come in and absorb the talent and skills of the younger population. More financial opportunities and aid could be made available to people who want to establish their own businesses. Now, these countries should keep in mind that they should work together in order to increase the contribution of the working population because the South Asian region represents a significant global population which is only increasing day by day. And while these estimates of the World Bank they depict a positive outlook for South Asian region. But this growth would mean nothing if there are no steps that are taken to increase the participation of the labor force, of the young labor force. With all that being said, please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found this video valuable, please share this video with your friends and family. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.